Hello and welcome to the official YouTube channel for CellSci, dedicated to research and development directed at improving the treatment of cancer, autoimmune, and infectious diseases. Joining us today to give us a more in-depth overview of the company's latest news is CEO Garrett Kirsten. Hi, Garrett. Thank so CellSci has announced the selection of Ergomed as the clinical research organization for the upcoming confirmatory FDA registration study of Multikine. Could you provide an overview of this partnership and its significance of the study? Okay, so when you think about it this way, you hire a contractor to build something out in your house. They come in, they promise the world, right? Oh, yeah, we're going to be there every morning at seven o'clock with five people and we'll get it done in a week. And yeah, nonsense. Exactly. Maybe the first day. By the second day already, they don't show up. They show up late. Only two people come. and There's an excuse. And then the costs go up and it doesn't get done and etc. That is what the world of CRO is like. CRO means clinical research organization. These are the people who run the studies for you worldwide. And they promise you and then they change people. And it's argument is different. We've worked with them. They enrolled a, our huge head and neck cancer study, over 900 people in 24 countries on three continents. And they enrolled 35 patients a month at the end, which is an enormous number, a huge success. And the study was super clean. So since that time, they became experts in head and neck cancer, which is our area from under the nose down to your clavicle, about 900,000 cases miserable disease because they do, I mean, literally surgeries take 15, 16 hours. They cut your tongue out. It's just a horrible disease. So it's a hard disease to treat, which is why we're pursuing it, right? Because if you're successful, then, I mean, everybody wants your drug because it's so horrible. And Ergomet is an excellent organization. We found them to be honest, knowledgeable, and therefore, we can depend on their timelines and their budgets. Let's dive even deeper into the rationale behind Ergomed. Uh, what factors led CellSci to choose Ergomed for this critical role? You discussed that just a second ago. But can you elaborate a little bit on Ergomed's previous contributions to CellSci's research efforts and how their expertise aligns with the objectives of the upcoming study? So... Since we had an earlier study of 928 patients, many of the people who participated in that study want to participate again. What we saw in that earlier study is that half of the patients who, after our drug, got surgery and radiation had massive, almost four-year survival benefit. And we're talking about FDA giving us a, approval on two months. We're talking about almost four years, okay? So it's huge. And a disease where no one has succeeded in decades. However, the other half where chemo was added didn't work. So this study in agreement with FDA is focused on the people where we know it works. And that's why it's not a big study because if you have huge survival benefits, you don't need to make it a big study. But Ergomed has all the contacts, the people that, where we used to run the study. And obviously when you have such good data, new people, key opinion leaders in different countries want to join. They know a lot of these people. We know some other people. And uh, that's the key. You want to do the study with the best people. You want to do it as fast as possible and clean because this is our registration study. So jokingly, I call this our $10 billion study. But it only costs $26.5 million to run it. But if you're successful and you create a cancer drug, that increases survival, it's unbelievable how much big pharmaceutical companies will pay. And the best example is a company last year called Immunogen, which was successful in the same kind of study that we're doing called a confirmatory study in ovarian cancer. And then they got bought out for $10.1 billion by AbbVie. So that's kind of the investment case here. But you don't do this work for money. You do it to help the patients and the money follows because so few cancer drugs actually work. Well, and that's toxic. This one's non-toxic. 
And you do it for the people in your home, really. I mean, you do it for the people who you don't know. I mean, your family members who who knows what if, if they will be somebody could, that could benefit from something like this, right? I mean, you it's kind of right. you have no idea who could benefit from. Something. You don't know. You may be feeling great today, and tomorrow you find something out, and your life changes instantaneously. And I. You know, I say my prayers of thanks every single day that we're healthy. And all the other problems are usually problems that other people wish for. So all the problems you have in developing a drug like this. We're a pioneer. And someone said to me, you're a pioneer and you've got the arrows in your back to show for it. Will anyone care once we bring this drug to market? And we know already it works. We just have to redo something else to check the boxes. No one will remember the arrows. No one will remember. All that they will say is this company wouldn't give up and created something the like of which, likes of which no one has ever seen, a first and a new class of drug. Let's get a little bit more into the details of the confirmatory registration study. I believe you called it a CRS. Uh, the press release mentions the study is set to enroll 212 newly diagnosed patients with locally advanced primary head and neck cancer, focusing on those with no lymph node involvement and low PD-L1 tumor expression. Could you provide more details about the study's design and its primary objectives? So we figured out from this last study exactly where our drug works, right? So one of the, the key things is to, there's a marker and regulators will love that, doctors like that. So we can test. And if you have that marker, then what, well, if you have that marker, in fact, then you probably would get Kate Trudeau, okay? But if you don't have that marker, you would get our drug. And by the way, 70% of people don't have much or don't have that marker. So it's a, so you know, okay, true, is a $30 billion drug, but it really only works in about 30% of the patients. I'm not saying we're going to take the other 70%. That becomes incredible, right? But we're saying that we are contributing benefit where the Keytruders of the world cannot work because there is no PDL one which they need to block. And... The reason why our drug works for them is because PDL1, that marker, is a break on your immune system. We don't want a break. We want to strengthen your immune system. We're to build it up. Now, how does this partnership and the upcoming study fit into the broader development and regulatory approval pathway for Multikine? What are the potential implications for patients and the market if the study has positive results? This is a registration study. And in Europe too, by the way. In Europe, they have a requirement that to bring a cancer drug to market, you also have to do pediatric drug development. So that means you have to bring a cancer, the same cancer drug to market for people under the age of 18. We don't have to do that. So in Europe, UK, Canada, US, anywhere we know, this study of only 212 patients where we already know that there's huge survival and we don't have to do as well this time as we did before. This study essentially is the only study we need to do to come to market. The risk of repeating something that did so well before is not that big. It's just not a normal phase three study where you might fail, call it a flip of a coin. That's what's so attractive here. We, it's a drug that's non-toxic, that has already shown great survival, and it now needs to repeat it but it doesn't have to be as good. Finally, this is just a personal question. Uh, why is this so important to you? I mean, obviously this is a life's work, um, not an easy, I, I, like we've talked about a lot, a lot of red tape to go through. I'm sure a lot of defeat, a lot of struggle, a lot of being told no. Why mm -hmm. keep going? Why is it so important to you personally? I don't know. It's, 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 I think I'm, I'm completely the wrong guy. I have no patience, yet I have the patience of Job when it comes to this. Okay? I am not a scientist. I'm a lawyer and finance guy. 
but I have the ability to bridge the two worlds. Um, I also think that science is not the only thing that counts. You must be able to survive Wall Street. So I am the guy who deals with Wall Street and money raising. You know, there are wonderful companies out there that have died in the last few years that will die because they can't raise money. And so maybe I, I can't explain I'm the right guy. For some reason, I have been the right guy. If someone greater, better would come along and take my job, I'd be happy to give it to them because what matters is what we can do for the patients to bring this drug to market. So if someone here out there, someone, guys, if you can raise a lot of money on great terms and do all of what I'm doing better, come forth. I will be happy to turn the sleepless nights over to you. But we are also almost at the end. So I doubt anyone is going to step forward at this point. But I mean, you're obviously very passionate about it. And it's something that you have put a lot of work into. And so it must mean the world to you. Well, it does also. And I'm a very fortunate guy because um, I've, I've been good at making money. So I've continued to fund the company personally. Okay. And uh, it, it's, look, at the end, what do we need to, we have to do what? We take care of our families, right? That's number one. And beyond that, we should do something that leaves an impact because we're all going to leave this world. And this will leave an enormous impact. It can save lives. It can save families. And think about it this way. What if we show the world it's possible to have a non-toxic cancer drug? That doesn't exist today, right? That's like the American Revolution. You put an idea out there. Once you show them it's possible to have a non-toxic cancer drug, well, people will have different expectations. They will say, hold on, I don't want this crappy drug. It says on here it might kill me, right? I want something that's not toxic. Tells I did it. That is how we change the world. We show people it can be done better, and then the world has different expectations. My wife has very high expectations of me, which means I have to live up to them. <laughs> Us wives are like that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, not easy, not always no, easy. <laughs> we're not always. <laughs> uh, I, that is all I have. Um, if there's anything, is there anything else that you want to address that I didn't ask? No, I think it's great because we were able to bring out some passion here, right? Yeah, yeah. And I mean it's 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 good. I mean, you have passion. You showed it, and I, it allowed me to come out. That, that's what matters here. We need the, the you and I, and you may be very successful. And you know, I, I'm compared to other people successful. We are the little people. Yeah, come here. <laughs> right, and, but we need a lot of little people to come together to make this happen. Yeah, and we're seeing that in this country too. I mean, in a lot of on a lot of fronts. Yes. No, I, I, I agree with you. you. You don't have to worry about me on, the, on all of that. <laughs> I guess the majority of America does too. Huh? <laughs> I, 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 I'm right next to Washington, D.C., in McLean, Virginia. Okay. What a, what a wild time to be there, I would assume. <laughs> it's, it was fine. I remember during the days when, when Trump first ran, there was a guy who I would meet regularly walking his dog and I would mark my dog. And we would talk a very, very nice, very low, low, low key guy. And he had full expectation of ending up in Hillary Clinton's uh, cabinet. Mm. Wow. And, well, that didn't work out so well, <laughs> did it? <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, my. All right. Well, it was a pleasure meeting you and speaking with you. And maybe we'll talk again soon. It's a real pleasure. 